What do a university professor, a thylacine and a Tasmanian jeweller have in common? They're all part of a project trying to bring the Tasmanian tiger back from extinction. This one is about this big, but this... All Professor Pask has to do is figure out how to turn this into this. We're making some amazing strides forward on the DNA editing. So on that, the really big part of the project is taking that, that Dunart cell, that fat tail Dunart, and putting all of the edits into it to really re-engineer the thylacine back into existence. Two years in, Professor Pask and his team are already seeing promising results. I think one of the greatest spin-off technologies that we've developed so far is this ability to create a marsupial biobank. Through the thylacine de-extinction work, we were able to develop marsupial stem cells. So this is a way of manipulating marsupial cells to form a, a cell that can basically make a whole nother living animal. So, what do we all think? Bring it back or no? That's what the University of Melbourne are asking at this special science exhibition. This installation at the Not Natural exhibition is a collaboration between the university and Tasmanian artist Emma Bug. The locket that I've made for the Not Natural exhibition is referencing an, a historic locket which would contain hair and a photograph. But what I'm looking at here is a contemporary version of that which, is, con, which contains thylacine DNA and hair. Whilst the locket represents the loss of the thylacine, the artist has also surveyed people about the de-extinction project. Ultimately, we're responsible for its extinction, but then how is it gonna interact with the environment after so long a time? Maybe instead of bringing back animals, should we consider preserving animals that are already critically endangered? I think it's really great to be able to bring back an animal that we lost because of colonialism. I've been so interested to capture this data along with the Science Gallery around um, getting, gathering opinions on whether we should or shouldn't bring back the thylacine. The thylacine is like a fantastic end goal, if possible, but everything they do leads into other marsupial species. Professor Pask and his team are confident it isn't a matter of if, but when the thylacine will live again. I think it'll be 10 years before we actually have a, 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 a completely engineered thylacine cell and starting to have those conversations about rewilding animals, putting animals back into the landscape. A decade to decide. Luke Bowden, ABC News.